Are apostles still important today? Aren't prophets just for the Old Testament? Why should that matter to me? We'll begin to explore some of these questions and more in this episode of Word Search with me, Christopher Dryden, where we're on episode number 13, God's Bodybuilders Sent and Speak. Word Search is a place to search God's Word and a time for God's Word to search us where we encourage godly character development that stimulates seeking God's kingdom first and his righteousness knowing that that should inform and transform our prayer and practice for here at word search we're looking to find treasure in god's word so that we can be hearers and doers of that word for his glory on word search today we'll be checking up on our journey so far in the new series on god's fit body plan as well as reading once more ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 to 16 and on that basis, we'll explore what it is to be a sent one, as well as examine carefully what it is to be God's mouthpiece, before summarising everything in a God's fit body plan hint review. At the end of our session today, we'll have some key prayer points that I want us to consider carefully going forward. So previously on Word Search, God's fit body plan is an understanding that every believer or follower of Jesus Christ is a member of the body of Christ and as a result every believer belongs to others in Christian fellowship. God has a plan for how his body is to function and that plan requires each part to function well. That was followed by a, a careful examination of our core scripture Ephesians chapter 4 where we had an overview of what was going on in that chapter and last week we got going in particular focusing on the key area of chapter 4 verses 11 to 16 that helped to highlight how Christ will be expressed on earth by his body and how he has given certain key gifts and he wants them to help to build his body so that it can reach maturity. That's what we covered last week. And those key gifts again are the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the shepherd and the teacher. And what we'll be looking at carefully this week and for the next couple of weeks is how those gifts function and how they help to build the body of Christ. And what we do as we explore is we ask the question, can we see Christ in his character and conduct in those gifts? And what helps us to discover more about what's going on in God's fit body plan is asking these key questions. What are those gifts sent to help the body? What is the work of the ministry? What members are there of the body? How is the body fit to function? And why should that matter to us? On the understanding that as a part of the body, it's good to know how you fit and how we fit together to function as God wants us to. So that's where we've been so far in our journey. Let's have the reading of our scripture. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 to 16 as read by Shirley Evans. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's son, that we will be mature in the Lord measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Thank you so much for the reading of the scripture, Shirley. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for this opportunity to hear your word read again. We love your word and we want to know more about you through your word. 
And so help us at this time as we explore carefully what you're revealing to us in your word, that which we need at this time to help us to do and be everything pleasing to you. Thank you that you hear our prayers. Thank you that you will give us insight and wisdom as we look into your word for your name's sake. In this scripture, I want to draw your attention to where Paul says carefully, this will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord. That indicates to us that the bodybuilding process will continue until we're mature and that these key gifts that he's outlining are crucial for that process to take place. There is nothing, as I understand it in scripture, to indicate that certain of these gifts will be wiped away until Jesus returns because of the completion of scripture or whatsoever. There's nothing to indicate that that should be the case according to the studies of scripture. What is clear is that Paul outlines that these gifts that Jesus has given are crucial for the building of the body until we all become mature into the fullness of who Jesus is. On that basis then, let's explore what is an apostle. In Hebrews chapter 3, verses 1 to 2, the writer says, Therefore, holy brothers, you who share in the heavenly calling, consider Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our confession, who was faithful to him who appointed him, just as Moses also was faithful in all God's house. First key point to be aware of then, as we consider the gifts that Jesus has given to the body, is that those gifts reflect him. So the apostles, as we'll see, were not the first ones sent by God. And indeed, they weren't the chief ones sent by God to demonstrate, as well as declare, what the kingdom of God looked like. Because the first one to do that was Jesus Christ himself. He was the sent one of God. Now, not only was he the sent one of God, but Jesus himself, although he had disciples, numerous disciples, we're told in scripture that he called 12 specifically to be with him. And not only to be with him, but that he would then delegate to various areas to again establish the spreading of the kingdom of God, the good news of the kingdom of God. And that links into what an apostle is. An apostle is a delegate. It's a sent one. It's like the king's ambassadors. What would happen is that a delegate would go to a particular area and represent the king in that area, establishing all the desires of the king in that place. Jesus typified that when he was here, not only talking about the kingdom of God, but actually demonstrating what the rule of God looked like by doing good works. Thus, the apostles, following in line with the one that sent them, following in his footsteps as it were were also commissioned to have authority in helping to build the church especially through their teaching but also through their expression of what the rule looked like particularly with signs and wonders now the 12 were clearly important they were so important that when judas killed himself peter in acts chapter 1 said it was important that judas's place should be filled so they went about on a particular criterion on who should be the 12th apostle. And it had to be somebody that had been with them and had seen what they had seen. So that, like them, those apostles uh, could be known by that characteristic of having been with them, seen what Jesus has done, and also be a witness to his resurrection. However, those 12 are not the only ones to be called apostles in Scripture which indicates if the apostolic movement ends with the death of those 12. Others would be called apostles. We know clearly that Paul would be called an apostle. That was going to be very important. And he didn't fit the criteria that fitted the other 12. And yet, God still called him to be an apostle. But there's also indications in scripture that others were called to be apostles. Chiefly, we see in the book of Acts that Barnabas was called an apostle. And in Paul's writings to the church in Corinth, even Apollos was referred to as an apostle as well. That all indicates that the apostolic movement continues 
uh, all the way through, even as Paul hints at with, in terms of how all of those five gifts are essential for the maturing and the building of the body until we've reached that peak of standard of the character of Christ. So we know that the ap apostolic is an operation when they are crucial to the foundation of the church. Earlier in the book of Ephesians, in Ephesians chapter 2, Paul referred to the apostles and the prophets as the foundation on which the church is built, with Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So clearly the apostles had a key role in the development, the foundation and the building of the church, as well as having the authority and the ability to express the rule of God as they were delegated to do in their key areas. So they're crucial to the foundation of the church. Also, the apostle is vital in embodying the mission of Christ. So we know what the mission of Christ looks like because of the apostolic example of what it is to declare the kingdom of God, to demonstrate the kingdom of God, and to understand that we're on a mission to share the kingdom of God far and wide to those who haven't heard it so that people can hear it and see it in action. In that sense, when we think about being a missionary, as it were, we see that the first ones sent on a mission were those apostles. And in a similar way, we're supposed to be stirred up by the apostolic when we see the apostle in action. When we think about the prophet, a lot of things come to mind. But I want to remind you of what Paul has to say to the church in Corinth when it came to a issue of spiritual gifts and certain people thinking that they were more spiritual than the other because of the exercising of speaking in tongues. Paul has this to say, I want you all to speak in tongues, but even more to prophesy. The one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues unless someone interprets so that the church may be built up. That last part will be very familiar to you, seeing as though it links in again with the whole ethos and the whole reason as to why God has sent these specific gifts to help to build the body of Christ. What is a prophet? First of all, it's important to realize that God communicates. In the beginning, we see God communicate. God would say something and what he said came about. God is a communicator. And how God chose to communicate with his people was through people. So there were certain key people all the way back from the time of Abraham going forward. And in fact, we can see that even Enoch was called a prophet in the sense that these people were God's spokespersons, essentially being God's mouthpiece. Whatever God wanted to communicate to others, he would do through these men and women throughout all time. Now, when we talk about expressing God and communicating God, nobody would do that better than Jesus Christ. Jesus expressed as the word. Jesus expressed as the one that all he ever said was what he heard the Father say. So in a very real sense, Jesus is a great expression of what it is to be a mouthpiece for God, even as he is the one that would be the culmination of all those things. It's also important to be aware of the fact that when we talk about the prophetic, it's about God communicating in time and about time, even if it's beyond time. Now, what I mean by that is that God will talk in the present about the present, but he'll often base what he's saying in the present to what he said before as an indication of what may happen in the future. A lot of people, when they hear the prophetic, often get caught up with the fact that God is going to tell you about something that will happen, as though it's, um, it's like fortune telling. Uh, where people want to know your future. And so you, you ask God, what's going to happen in my future? And you wait for a prophet to turn up to say that you will marry a wife who is six foot two who, and you will have a car that is going to be black. And those kind of things, that's what they think about when it comes to the prophetic. However, when we consider the prophetic tradition, both in the Old and the New Testament, it's clearly based on an understanding of what God is saying in the present that can affect the future. And it's more important to hear the expression of who God is in the prophetic than anything else. Now, for those who would suggest that the prophets were no longer needed uh, after Jesus ascended, there's a small issue about the book of Acts that gives records of 
frequent prophetic utterances. We have the situation where there was the famine that was prophesied about that was taking place in Jerusalem. There's also the episode where Paul was prophesied to by Agabus in terms of what would happen to the man who was bound by the belt uh, that happened to be Paul's belt. We're told also in Acts that Philip had daughters who were all prophets or prophetesses in their case. All of that to say that the ability and the need for God to communicate to his people through his people did not end just because Jesus came. In fact, it went on. What marked out all prophets is their ability and their desire to stay in line with what God communicates. What marks out a prophet in particular is their sensitivity to only communicate that which they believe God is saying through them for the benefit of others. Bearing in mind again, prophets were people that God communicated through for the building up of other people. So it wasn't essentially just about fortune telling. It wasn't about telling you what's going to happen in your future. It was sharing with you the mind and the heart of God that would make a change in your life so that you could become more in line with what God has called you to be and how God wants you to be aware of that which is coming up so that you can likewise trust in God rather than trusting in man. Everything about the prophetic really was crucial in expressing the character of God. In the same way then, the purpose of the prophet was to stir up in the saints that same desire to be God's mouthpiece. So that if we know that God could speak through someone, even though we ourselves may not be a prophet ourselves, we could certainly see the value of being God's mouthpiece so that we can help to build others up in their faith. We may not be a prophet, but we could certainly, by his spirit, prophesy. That's why Paul makes it very clear that the whole point of having the gifts in the body is to build others up. And there's no better way that you can build somebody up than by speaking to them in a way that they can clearly understand and not just speaking to them from your mind, but speaking to them from the heart of God, communicating the will of God so that people can come back to the way of God for the glory of God. So those are just brief overviews of the apostle and the prophet. In conclusion then, when it comes to the apostle and prophet, I'd like us to consider the following, that Jesus commissions delegates that is jesus sends people a special envoys of him to establish the mission of god and how that mission of god is about declaring the kingdom of god and demonstrating it to establish and build with authority the gathering of saints around this beautiful good news of the rule of god in action so the mission of god in jesus is established through these key apostles and the apostolic is still needed today just as we see there are various areas that haven't been touched uh, by the kingdom of god and haven't seen the kingdom of god declared and demonstrated just as we see areas in need of an expression of who god is so there are those who understand and have that calling of god that they are sent as delegates to both declare and demonstrate the rule of god and help to establish and build what that rule looks like through teaching and through building individuals as a collective in the understanding of who God is in Christ and what that means for them. So the apostolic is very much still needed today. As well as that, we need to understand that Jesus still speaks today and he speaks through his people so that they can be built up in their faith in him and in the understanding of who he is. So we should acknowledge and respect those who are called to speak. And as Paul indicates, we should all desire for God to use us by his spirit to be able to communicate his will and his way for the building of the saints. The prophets are there to help us to be sensitive to God speaking to us as well as through us. As we see that the apostle and the prophets are not just there to build in terms of what they do, but they're also there to equip the saints for the work of ministry, we get an indication that we serve others by realizing that our God is a sending God, a God on a mission, and our God is a communicating God, a God who speaks, and he will send us and speak through us. 
my challenge to you is can you see Jesus the Apostle, the sent one? Can you see how he was sent to earth to fulfill the mission of his father? And can you see how effective he was as the mouthpiece of his father? Because if you can see these things in him, then you can appreciate all the more why he has then gifted those in the body to allow us to be a part of that mission and a part of what he's communicating to us. Okay, so let's review how that fits in to God's fit body plan. Do we have an understanding of the gifts that God has sent to help the body? Well, hopefully we should see that that's correct in terms of the apostle and the prophet. Can we see what the work of the ministry is then as a result of that? Hopefully we can see that it's not just an apostle and a prophet, but it's about expressing the apostolic nature of Jesus as well as the prophetic nature of Jesus. And also we can see that there are certain members in the body of Christ who are likewise called to be prophets and apostles. And it's important for us to recognize them, acknowledge them, celebrate them, and see that they are supported in fulfilling what God has called them to do. And the body is only fit to function when we have a basis and a foundation on the revelation of who Jesus is through these particular gifts. The key thing for us on this occasion is to see that it matters because it matters to God that we reflect who Jesus is. We reflect who he is not just by sitting and hearing and watching these people exercise these gifts, but appreciating how it reflects who Jesus is and it informs and shapes our idea of what God has called us to do together for his honour and for his glory, knowing clearly that as a part of the body, it's good to know how you fit as well as how we fit together to function as God wants us to. Here are some prayer points that I want us to consider carefully. Let's praise God for the apostles and the prophets. Let's praise God for the tradition going through, back through centuries of men and women of God who were sent by God to establish the rule of God and that those men and women as well who were also sent to express the very heart of God as he wanted it to be. Let's praise God for that. And let's thank God that Jesus himself was the one who was sent to be the mouthpiece of God and that he sets the example for us to follow so that in the apostle and the prophet we see something that reflects who he is for his glory. Let's ask God for the humility to recognize and affirm those who are called and gifted in these areas. We need that humility because we need to recognize that they are God's gift to us to build us up and equip us for the work that we should be doing and to become the body that God has called us to become. Let's also seek God carefully for the direction when it comes to the apostolic and the prophetic. Sadly, but not surprisingly, just as there is the authentic and the real version of the apostolic and the prophetic, so the Bible would go on to outline how many false prophets there were and false apostles prevalent throughout the church. So we need to seek God carefully for the real thing, for the genuine article based on his word, expressing the character of Christ in terms of what it is to be built up by the apostolic and the prophetic. Let's continue to celebrate God for his eternal purposes that are fulfilled in Jesus Christ, the word who was sent so that we too could be sent to declare his word. Understanding that kingdom people apply kingdom practices in kingdom pursuits for kingdom purposes. Next time on Word Search with me, Christopher Dryden, episode 14, God's Bodybuilders, have I got good news for you. Find out what that good news is all about as we explore uh, further who those bodybuilders are in our next episode. In the meantime, please remember to like this video uh, if you've learned anything from it, if it's inspired you to go deep in the word. And also remember to share it with your friends and your loved ones, your brothers and sisters in Christ to encourage and stimulate their own commitment to growing in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus. Remember to subscribe to the channel, turning those notifications on so that you are made aware and alerted to future episodes of Word Search. If you'd like to support the channel, feel free to do so through the contact information that you'll see in the description below. More than anything, though, we're very keen that you should apply what you learn 
in the sessions today. There should be something in Word Search that should challenge you on how you pray and what you put into practice for the glory of God. And that's our desire to see God glorified as we take his word seriously. Thank you so much as ever for your time in paying attention to Word Search. Because here at Word Search, we're very keen to find treasure in God's word so that we can be hearers and doers of his word for his glory. Until next time on Word Search, God richly bless you and all that you love. And shalom.